Well, I think when you think of a Texas outdoorsman, I mean, the iconic one in our lifetimes is Bubba. Martin F. Wood has been known as Bubba his whole life, born in Wichita Falls in 1940. He was a remarkable child from the beginning, the son of a very successful Texas oil man. It's a great thing to be born on third base, but you don't want to ever think you hit the triple. I hope I've adhered to that as much as I possibly could. Bubba's dad had other ideas for his son. He didn't want him to follow in his footsteps. No, he wouldn't let me even go on the go near a rig. He just said he'd seen too many people injured, and, and in fact, he, he started out as a working on all of it. His father's friends were a who's who of the oil business elite. Sid Richardson, Perry Bass, and Clint Murkison, to name a few. He was drinking coffee in uh, the Baker Hotel in Mineral Wells, and Sid Richardson walked in. Dad said, Sid, what are you gonna do? They were both struggling, and he said, I'm going to West Texas, I'm on my way to West Texas. Come go with me, and we'll be partners. And Dad said, no, I'm going back to Wichita Falls where I know someone and uh, the rest is history, <laughs> you know. In the early 50s, the elder Wood was part of Democrats for Ike, helping Dwight Eisenhower win Texas and secure the presidency. After the election, Bubba remembers a trip to the nation's capital with his dad. We went to the White House and we were in a waiting area to go in and see the president. And finally, they called us to come and walk through the door and uh, Eisenhower was sitting behind his desk. He stood up and said, hi, Frank, how you doing? And Dad said, hi, I'm doing great, how are you doing? And one of the aides went over to my dad and said, Mr. Wood, we refer to the president as Mr. President. He said, he wasn't Mr. President when we were raising him all that money in Texas. And Eisenhower starts laughing. I'm just sort of looking back and forth like a ping pong match, you know, I don't know what's going on. And they got to laughing about it. That, uh, and Eisenhower said, Frank, you can call me anything you want to. His love for hunting and fishing started early, and he even studied Francis Courtright's book. Ducks, geese, and swan in North America. When I was seven, eight years old, I could name, identify every duck, and they even had artist renderings of the, of the baby ducks. I could name them all. Maybe his fascination with the outdoors and his sporting life was because his dad was chairman of the Texas Parks and Wildlife. Bubba had a childhood any of us would love to have. Absolute fabulous father, you know, as far as taking me hunting and fishing. And, and if he couldn't take me, he would see that I got taken. The game wardens in North Texas became my hunting guides, which was great. And these guys were, in fact, three game wardens were groomsmen in my wedding. Over the years, Bubba's had numerous mentors and friends that he's hunted with and helped develop him into the great sportsman he is, including Ray Hale. So going quail hunting with Bubba is a real treat. You know, he, he's uh, got an incredible ability to be at the right spot at the right time and, and always seem to, to get his bird. He can read the dogs, and if there's a change in the dog's body language, or he can detect which way the covey is, and then he always seems to be standing in the right place. You watch his footwork, he's like a great boxer. He gets his gun up so quick that the birds are barely off the ground and he's already shouldered his gun and other people are looking around to see where the birds are. Hunting with Bubba can be like hunting with Johnny Carson. You know, he's always got a quip for every circumstance. He's been so great in his life that he doesn't need to tell you about it. He can be very self-effacing, make jokes at his own expense. One of the things I appreciate most about Bubba is he's such an encourager for younger people that are coming along in the sport. You know, he, he'll talk to me before I go hunting, he'll ask me, you know, what kind of gun am I bringing? Where am I going? What kind of shells I'm shooting? Uh, and who I'm going with? And then at, on the way back from the hunt, he always calls and says, so how was it? Did you, how the birds? How many coveys did you get? How many birds did you put in the bag? How the dogs, how do they behave? And it's really, it's, it's almost like Jack Nicholas is calling you before you're around a golf and calling you after and saying, so how did you do? It just really makes you feel 10 feet tall. All hunting's fun, but the dogs add so much to a quail hunt. This dog over here, this is Rocky. This is the best dog I ever had. I wouldn't give you a nickel to shoot a quail. We didn't have a bird dog on the ground. Why, why you know, go shoot skeet? It's, you know, it's cheaper and, and easier. Bubba was one of the greatest shotgunners of all time, a passionate skeet shooter, and in 1976, he formed a five-man team called 
the Cosmic Cowboys. The team traveled the country and owned the sport of five-man team skeet in 1976, 1977. They were undefeated. I spent several wayward years as a skeet shooter and uh, I had some success. Bubba was an All-American several times. He broke 1,000 continuous clays with each gauge on multiple occasions. And in 1992, Bubba was inducted into the National Shooting Sports Association Hall of Fame. Bubba was obviously the, the best skeet shot in the world at one time and for several years. That says it all about how good he was. And he was that good in every discipline of shooting that he chose to participate in. Bubba has taken a lot from the sport, a lot of joy, a lot of pleasure, a lot of satisfaction. But the one thing you can say about Bubba is that he has tried his level best to give back more than he's taken. We were cleaning out the warehouse, a part of the warehouse at Collector's Covey not long ago, and uh, I found this, it was sitting in a pile of, of trash. And I said, what is this? And he said, well, this is um, some plaque that the Ducks Unlimited gave me. I said, what did you do to earn this lifetime member? He said, oh, I think it was $10,000. That was 1977. So that just kind of goes to show you how he's had a lifetime of giving back to conservation. Conservation is incredibly important to Bubba. He was instrumental in starting the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation. He was behind the duck stamp program, which generated $7 million for the state of Texas. He's done work for the Coastal Conservation Association, but his greatest contribution to conservation came after a meeting with Park City's Quail Coalition co-founder, Joe Crafton. So when I moved to Texas 20 years ago, I was blown away by the wild quail hunting experience here in Texas. First thing I wanted to do was join Quail Unlimited and meet some other quail hunters. Come to find out there was no chapter of Quail Unlimited, so a few friends of mine and I created a new chapter of Quail Unlimited, and we called it Park City's Quail. The first thing people told me is, you gotta meet Bubba Wood, and we hit it off, and he was very encouraging for us. He encouraged us to start the chapter and to get the dinner going, and we did. And then the second year, Bubba said, I'd like to go talk to my friend Boone Pickens about joining your effort. And he did, and the rest is history. You know, Boone was made for Park City's Quail. <laughs> you know, and, and certainly, the good news is it helped make Park City's Quail. Boone told Bubba that he would become involved in PCQC if Bubba would promise to stay involved, and it was done first rate. I think, although Bubba might not say this, I think he loved Park City's because it gave him a vehicle that he could use to organize his efforts to try to give back to the sport that he loved. There would be no Park City's Quail Coalition as we know it today without the influence of Bubba Wood. In my underachieving life, it's the thing I'm the most proud of being associated with is Park City's Quail. Not only was Bubba's love for hunting and the outdoors a passion and hobby, it became his life's work. In his 30s, he opened Collector's Covey, an art gallery in Dallas specializing in sporting art. I opened Collector's Covey in 1978. The timing was perfect. You know, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know the timing was perfect. I just knew that was something I wanted to do. Bubba was the guy who actually provided the best stuff. He knew the best artists. Tell me the story behind the decoys. Well, the story, I, I guess, this is the first indication that I might be in the art business someday. I had gotten into it through my decoy collecting and starting to publish prints with artists, just messing around, you know, and uh, saw the opportunity of the prints and say, hey, this could be a business. It's something I'd really like to do. He developed a market that simply wasn't there until Collector's Covey was established. He could look at a piece not only with the eye of a hunter, but with the eye of basically an art historian. And then, probably rarest of all, when he looked at something and he'd tell me this isn't quite right, he would tell me what wasn't quite right. It wasn't simply a matter of, I'm not sure, but that doesn't look right. He'd say, this just doesn't have the feel of this dog in this situation. But the thing is, it wasn't work. It was just nothing but fun. It was 40 years of fun. I got all the bad habits. <laughs> I remember Highland Park Housewives worst nightmare. <laughs> there is no one in the world like Bubba Wood. He treats everyone he meets with respect and like they've been friends for years. Many people have been fortunate enough to cross paths with Bubba over the years, but his wife Pat has been by his side since they met as teenagers in school in Wichita Falls. I met my wife when I was 15 and a half years old and she was 14. She's the best. 
Pat has always supported Bubba's passion for hunting. She was a hunter. I mean, she's killed a limit quail. She shot 24 out of 25 at ski. However, Pat's hunting career abruptly ended one dove season on a lease in Albany that Bubba shared with his good friend, Gil Clements. There was high humidity and the temperature was over 100 degrees. I look over at her and she's looking at me and she said, I hate this, I've always hate this, and I'm never doing it again. She picks up our youngest son, Patrick, puts him on her hip and starts walking back to the car. Bubba Wood, a Texan, a sportsman, a conservationist. You'd be hard pressed to find a subject on the outdoors in which you can't get a question answered by Bubba Wood. You know, he's pretty remarkable. I mean, he's spent 300 nights in a sheep camp. He's caught Atlantic salmon in Russia. He's caught steelhead in British Columbia. And he and I had a time of our lives brim fishing in East Texas. So he's pretty spectacular when it comes to that. So for years, we've been trying to give Bubba Wood the T. Boone Pickens Lifetime Sportsman Award. Because after all, he is the most qualified honoree we've probably ever had. And he epitomizes the award itself. And so after years of him rejecting us and saying, no way, over my dead body, because you know, he really is self-effacing, cannot take a compliment, and hates to be at the center of attention. But eventually, the board of directors went to him and gave him no choice and gave him the ultimatum, you have to accept this award. So when he probably capitulated and broke down, he had an emotional moment, he paused and he said, you know, this, this is probably the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And then he took a pause and in true Bubba Wood fashion, he said, isn't that pathetic? The 2021 T. Boone Pickens Lifetime Sportsman Award recipient, Bubba Wood. Thank everybody. We're all pretty pathetic when we celebrate the luckiest birth in the world <laughs> and a life of hunting and fishing, but if you guys are for it, who am I to tell you you're all out of place? I worked on a speech and knowing I was going to fall Pete and Joe and all these pros, uh, I decided I, in fact, I have a speech. My wife help me do. And I just really want to just say that I'm the luckiest guy in the world. And I'm so proud of being associated with Park City Quail and these guys. I mean, they work 24-7 on this, and it's really remarkable. And I really think that we're going to solve this problem. I mean, I've seen lots of ups and downs in the quail field, but I think we're going to get it done, and uh, I'm really tickled to be uh, to get this award, which is from the first day I saw Walter Bronze, I think, you know, I wanted one of those. And <laughs> I found out the best way to do it is act like you don't want it. <laughs> and then Crafton and Pete, they're, they're going to fall for that. They're not bright enough to know that this is so much of a baloney. <laughs> and uh, I just can't tell you what a great life it's been. I wish y'all, I wish y'all, I hope y'all had a better one than that one, but I wouldn't trade mine for anyone's. Uh, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate it, how much I love my wife, and how it couldn't have been done without my wife. And ever since she was 14 and I was 16, 15, it, uh, uh, I just couldn't be luckier. I mean, you know, I made a lot of mistakes, but I hadn't made them when it really counts. Thank you so much. Father, thank you. Hey, don't run away. Huh? That was good. Yeah. Hey, don't go, oh, no, 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 no. Don't go anywhere. So, so I, I, I have something that, that I want to share with you for just a moment, okay? So you see these banners over here to the right, yeah. okay? So you're, you're joining a great group of sportsmen. No you look at these over here, over here on the left, yeah. okay? Now I want you to watch this. Now, now you guys look over there. Look down here to the right of Carl, okay? In three, two, 
one. Look at that. Huh? <laughs> Pretty neat. Pretty good. Okay, now don't. It's a long way from the Midwest to te Dallas, Texas. Isn't it? it is a long way. It's You're luckier than I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have one more surprise for you. Hey, okay, the artist community. You know, you, I mean, we just heard what Walter had to say, and these folks just love you so much. But, but you know Craig Harrison, right? I do know Craig, 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 where are you? Stick your hand up. I knew this was going to happen. Yeah, well, oh, there's Craig over here. When I saw Craig. So, so Craig's here tonight. Yeah. But what? Here, stay right there. I want you all to watch this. So Craig created something very special for Bubba, and this is going to be displayed at the new headquarters at the Rolling, here, I want you to do this, at the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch. And here it is. Wow. Look at this. That's great. So, we're putting that at the research ranch because Pat said she couldn't have two of you at the house. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, sometimes she doesn't even want one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give Bubba a round of applause. Hey. If, uh, if, we, if we do get this turned around, the quail situation, my wife is the best quail trainer, I mean cleaner in the world. I mean, she is the best. And I want to invite all of y'all to come to our house when you start killing lemons of quail. Give them to Pat. She'd probably take her two or three days before she gets them back. <laughs> but it'll be great for all of us, you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Here, let's watch. Here, here. Oh, let's, let's, I want to stop right here. I want to get you, you by yourself with, with. You like it? <laughs> let's get a picture right here.